water, body of water that is there in reserve for use. Isn't that so? You think of the gallbladder. <laughs> Proverbs 4, 23. Proverbs 4, verse 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the what? Issues of life. So here Solomon, the wisest man who ever walked on the face of the earth, is saying, we should keep our heart with diligence, all diligence. He didn't just say keep your heart with diligence, with all diligence. Be committed to taking care of the heart. Why? Because out of it are the issues of life. Out of the heart comes who you are, comes what you will do comes where you will go. Everything that is in the heart will be reflected in your actions. And therefore, if the heart is kept diligently, the way God wants it to be kept, then our character will reflect the heart. Keep the heart with all diligence. That means there are some things that are in the heart that we want to be there and there are some things that want to be in the heart that shouldn't be there so we should keep out the things that should not be there and you know take care and guard the things that should be there number one the heart must be full if out of the heart flows the issues of life. Therefore, the heart must be full of whatever is going to be flowing out. Right? If the heart is empty, there's nothing to come out. So therefore, something has to be there. Joy. Can I be joyful if the heart is not joyful? You're just going to be going around with the face that is a mile long. smile as God's people the heart should be merry we should have a merry heart the Bible tells us in uh, Proverbs that a merry heart doeth good like a medicine we need to have a joyful heart we need to have a heart that is full of love if the heart is not filled with love, if the heart is not loving, then our actions will not be loving. Then we will be just hard and harsh. Heart should be filled with grace as we have received grace from God. The heart should be filled with grace. And what is this grace? We should, could someone tell me what is grace? Unmerited favor. It is a favor that you do not deserve, but you're given in any way. Right? And so because we have been given this favor, this grace from God, we, were, we are sinners destined to die. But Jesus Christ came in his love and died for us. Or the Bible tells us as the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So he came, our wages should be death, but he has given us the gift that we don't deserve, which is life. We claim that through Jesus Christ. Our hearts should be filled with compassion for others. Jesus, as he looked over Jerusalem, the Bible tells us that his heart was filled with compassion for Jerusalem. You know, as we look out around us, our hearts should be filled with compassion for those around us. Full of the Holy Spirit. Because as our heart is filled with the Holy Spirit, then we will have the fruit of the Spirit. Which would be reflected in our daily uh, encounter with others. And our hearts should be filled with the Word. We cannot survive without the word. 
We have to fill the heart with the word. You know, Brother Asnaki and myself were talking in that little room out there about, uh, you know, people exposing themselves to the word. Some people just expose themselves to the word for two or three hours on Sabbath. And that's it for the whole week. And then we fill our hearts with everything else in the world throughout the course of the week. Now, who is going to win out? The world or, or, or the word? Yeah. We have to fill our, our hearts with the word. We can't get too much of the word. John 1, 14. And the world, word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. And look at this. Full of what? Grace and truth. So Jesus Christ with the word. He was filled with what? Grace and truth. And so when we... Uh, are exposed to Jesus and he comes in our heart we too will be filled with grace and the truth so if we want to be filled if we want our heart reservoir to be full then we have to draw close to Christ because he is full and he wants to give us of what he has any thought on what was stated so far anybody I'm thinking of the woman at the well because Jesus told her that whoever drinks of the water that he will give will never thirst again. But that water that overflows from him to that person is going to be in that person as a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Amen. So when we go to Jesus who is full, we can't help but being filled ourselves. So if we do we really and truly want to be filled, Jesus is the answer. Psalm 87, verse 7. And we're going to concentrate on last as well the singers as the players on instruments shall be, be there. All my springs are in thee. All the springs that will because if think of we're talking about the heart's reservoir tonight right uh, how does the reservoir get get uh, get filled how does it get filled right think of a reservoir you have to have a river going flowing into it right think of uh, the dam there in that we get our water supply from what's the name of the dam there falcon dam what river runs into the Falcon Dam? Rio Grande River, right? And it is blocked off so that there is a great body of water there. And from it, uh, we get our water. And people in Mexico get gets their water. And we all are supplied. But there has to be a spring or a river flowing into the reservoir to fill the reservoir. Something has to flow in. And Jesus is that spring. Because all my springs are in Christ. All my springs are in God. They're flowing into me. Making me full. And therefore I can uh, overflow with his grace. So the reservoir must not only be filled. It must also be pure. The heart's reservoir must also be pure. Think of the reservoir again. First, the water is treated. Uh, the water from the Falcon Dam does not run into your tap without being treated first. A lot of people would be sick. The water has to be treated. What, how do they treat the water? They put chlorine in the water? Huh? 
yes, it, it, it's going to be treated and it must be filtered. Now, how can we treat or filter our heart reservoir? Give me some ideas. Huh? What we see and what we hear, Brother Nelson? <laughs> what we feed ourselves with. So we're going to have to filter out some things. When we filter the water, what we're doing, we're taking out some impurities, right? And so we cannot allow everything to go in. We have to filter out some things and allow some things to go in. Yes. There are some things that cannot be filtered. That's, that's correct. Because they're so small. So, but they seep into the water. But the water has to be treated to kill those things. Like the bacteria and the, all those germs that are in the water. We may filter it, but it doesn't remove all those fine things. And it's the same thing with the word of God. And, and everything that we come in contact with. You know? So it's, it's a process. So the water must also be tested after it has been filtered, after it has been treated. The water has to be tested before it is sent out to the, the, the public. Because there may have been a mistake somewhere. How do we test the heart? Um, that question reminds us of, uh, of course, it is the Holy Spirit that does the work. However, it takes me back also to the uh, sanctuary service. Um, the people who have um, been uh, committing sin during the year, and especially on that um, on that final day, which is the Day of Atonement, uh, the priest especially who is representing the people and going into the sanctuary and facing God, um, if his life hasn't went through those steps and there remains uh, as part in his life, then he would be expected not to come out of. And then as a result, also the people who are expecting uh, that treatment. So it is um, our life being tested against the Word of God. And that is where uh, it comes. The heart reservoir has to be tested. Let me use that. Let me use it. It has to be tested with the word of God. Everything that goes in and comes out has to be in alignment with the word of God. It must come from the right source. Everything that goes in must come from the right source. You know, uh, when I was in New York, I worked for a company that tested water in, in the, the uh, tri-state area of New York. And we had effluent or, or substances coming from factories that ran into the bay. And we had to make sure that the toxicity of those things do not affect the, the fish and all that and, and water so that water would not become contaminated. We cannot have a contaminated uh, river running into the heart reservoir can't be contaminated. It has to be pure. Wherever it's coming from, it has to be pure. If it's not pure, it can't, you can't allow it to get in. So it, it, it must come from the right source. Exodus 15, verse 23. And when they came to Mara, this is the children of Israel, uh, they left Egypt, crossed the Red Sea, got on into the wilderness, uh, a few days later, they ran out of water and they started to complain. 
When they came to Mara, they could not drink the waters of Mar, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Mara, and they complained, the water is bitter, we cannot drink of it. We cannot have bitter water entering our heart reservoir because it will not be satisfying. And so God told Moses to do something and, Mo and he cried. This is Moses cried unto the Lord and the Lord showed him a tree which he had cast into the waters. The, water, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them. So the water was bitter. Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. Moses cut the tree down, threw it into the, into the water, and it wasn't a small body of water. Why do I say that? Because this water was going to feed over... Uh, uh, satisfy the thirst of over a million people. So it couldn't just be a small body of water. And the animals as well. Not only people, but the animals as well. So it was a big body of water and he threw a tree in it. Couldn't be a, maybe it was a big tree, but compared to the amount of water, it was a small tree. So was it the tree that caused the water to, to become sweet or was it a miracle from God? It was a miracle from God. It was a miracle from God. So, the, the bottom line is that we may have the wrong water coming into the heart. But, if we cry out to God, he can put a tree there. Cause your water to become sweet. And where can we go to find this tree? All we have to do is go to Calvary, my friends. Because Jesus hung on the tree. He was made to be a, a shame for us on the tree. And so his blood will cleanse the vile, sin sick heart, make us pure. Revelation 7, verse 14. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. If we want to be pure, if you want our, we want our heart uh, reservoir to be sweet, we have to have it be purified at the foot of the cross. So the heart should be full, it should be pure. The heart reservoir should be at peace as well. There is absolutely no way that I can preach the gospel of peace if I don't have peace in my heart. Or I'm going to be a hypocrite. We can have peace through daily prayer. Daily study of the word. Daily committing to Christ. Daily sharing the word of God. Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Many times we want peace in our hearts. But the waters are so uh, boisterous. Just like Peter as he stepped out. The waters were so boisterous. But he cried out to Christ as he was sinking. They were in the boat, in the storm. Jesus stood up and said, peace be still. If we want peace in our hearts. Because many times as God's people. We really do not have peace in our hearts. Because we yearn for things. We, we desire uh, fulfillment of certain things. And uh, we just don't have peace. But if we truly trust God. And recognize his, his divine power. And recognize that he has your interests at heart. My interests at heart. Then I wouldn't be stressed. I wouldn't be like the waves that are tossing back and forth. But there will be peace because I am still. And I think about the awesome God that I serve. I think about the love that he has for me. And I know that he has my best interests at heart. 
the heart must be undivided. Matthew 6, 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. You know, in a reservoir, if we had a million streams flowing from the reservoir, it would not be very effective. Because those little streams, when the sun comes out and the time gets really hot, they would dry up. And the reservoir would dry up. But if we have specific flows from it, you know, like even from the Falcon Dam, uh, they have specific points where water is let out. It doesn't just let out the water all over. No. When it comes to our heart, the heart cannot be divided in its commitment to God. It's either you are on God's side or you are on the side of mammon or man or the world. It cannot be divided. We cannot serve two masters. Because if we try to, ser try to serve two masters, then we are not going to be very good at either. Sometimes we try to do too many things. Have you ever found yourself doing that? Doing too many things and not getting anything done? <laughs> we have to be focused on one thing. You know, in our lives, it's like a whirlwind. There are many things that are, in a whirlwind, there are many things that are swirling around in the whirlwind, right? But sometimes we have to step outside of the whirlwind and pick up one thing and focus on that one thing. Get it right. Then once we get that right and that becomes a part of our being, then we step back in the whirlwind, pick out another one. And so eventually all whirlwind will become a whirlwind of order. Because you will be doing everything right because you have made a commitment. You know, uh, in the corporate world, they tend to say, train people that they should not try to do too many things at, at one time. But do one or two things and get those things right. And once you have those things right in the office, then you can pull another one and try to get that right as well. But if you go into an office and try to give them everything and say, make sure everything is okay, it's not going to work. You have to pick out, even when, when a new pastor goes to a church, you know, he has to look and he sees the things that are working, the things that are not, but he doesn't try to change everything at the same time because he's going to have a revolt. <laughs> you know, so you pick out one thing and you work with that one thing. My friends, when it comes to our spiritual lives, let's choose Christ and let it work for us. John 4, 14. But whosoever drinketh, as Marlene spoke of earlier, the woman at the well, Jesus met this woman and told her of the water that she could have. But whosoever drinketh of the water I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. And so when we get that water that Christ offers, we will not only be drinking of it of ourselves, but we will be sharing what we have been given. In Revelation twenty two seventeen, and the spirit and the bride say come, and let him that hear it say come, and let him that is a thirst and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Keep your heart with all diligence. For it what? What is it? Out of it flows the issues of life. Keep your heart with all diligence. Be committed. And make sure that what goes in is what God wants to go in. Keep it with all diligence. Because out of it, keep it full. Keep it pure. Keep it peaceful. Make sure that the source is right. And by God's grace, as we drink from it, we will take of the water of life freely and it will make a difference in our experience. As we enter the Sabbath, as we enter the Sabbath,
Let us seek to know Christ. The author